Sensor nodes in the IoT are perhaps the ideal use case for energy harvesting, but it still requires a leap of faith to move away from a known and reliable power source like a battery or offline to something that's far less tangible. However, just as the availability of ultra-low power digital solutions has reduced our dependence on power, the technology involved with energy harvesting has also improved. This video is the first of a two-part series that will address and dispel 11 common myths associated with energy harvesting as an impractical alternative to conventional power sources. Myth number one, energy harvesting is expensive. Some may believe that energy harvesting is an expensive design choice, but consider the total system cost of the alternatives, including batteries, a dedicated terminal, and AC to DC converters for offline use and even transformers. Energy harvesting devices, on the other hand, are often small and unobtrusive and can present a lower system cost overall, as well as reducing the total cost of ownership. Myth number two, energy harvesting is fine in principle, but hard to implement in practice. Depending on the harvesting technology selected, your engineers may need to adapt their design approach. But upon design completion, an application that uses harvest energy is considered maintenance free becoming fit and forget. Experience where the application can be fitted almost anywhere and designed to any form factor with little to no compromises. Myth number three, the aesthetics of the end application will suffer. Devices powered from secondary cells need regular recharging, meaning a wireless coupling or a connection port accessible to the user. Lending risk of external damage or in turn an engineer would create a design to mitigate these complications. However, consider the design reasoning from a previous point. Using a reliable, essentially inexhaustible form of power opens up potential in product design in which the transducer can become front-facing or even hidden from view. Myth number four, harvesting energy is unreliable. The key to removing supply anxiety with energy harvesting is to design it with the use case in mind and choose the most appropriate form of harvesting transducer. One example is Peltier. Peltier effect is used in semiconductor-based transducers to generate energy from temperature gradients. Vibration, light, heat, and even RF radiation are now reliable sources of energy ready to be harnessed. Myth number five, you can't generate enough energy for wireless applications. Some of the latest Bluetooth low energy devices are particularly pertinent to ultra low power applications and semiconductor solutions are now available that embrace this recent innovation. The amount of power generated is enough to supply a device like the RSL 10 SIP, a complete system in package solution featuring Bluetooth low energy connectivity and a fully integrated antenna. A single press of an energy harvesting switch can produce enough energy to enable the RSL-10 SIP to register the switch actuation, take measurements from any additional sensors, process the data, and transmit it to a Bluetooth gateway every time it's actuated. It's a great example of how energy harvesting can be totally reliable in an IoT application. Myth number six, energy harvesting takes up more space. While an energy harvesting switch is probably larger than a regular switch, the user doesn't have to factor in space required for AA, AAA, or even coin cell batteries, or a power transformer. Many of the newer solutions are intended to be unobtrusive, which also opens up new opportunities in product design. Thermoelectric transducers can measure just a few millimeters in thickness and be attached between a heat sink and the inside of a metal enclosure, completely out of sight. In this way, they add barely any additional thickness and provide what is essentially a free source of energy from what is otherwise wasted heat. Energy harvesting is rapidly becoming an important part of sustaining the IoT by putting the source of the energy right at the point of use. Not only does this reduce the burden of power generation in general, it also reduces the reliance on batteries, which present their own carbon footprint. As the number of IoT endpoints increases to the many billions, we can expect energy harvesting to become even more integral to tomorrow's connected world. Please stay tuned for our second part in this series and for more information regarding On Semiconductor and our energy harvesting platforms, please visit our website at www.onsemi.com.